Hi everyone, welcome to another video. So I haven't had any recent shout outs to give. Nobody has subscribed over half term. If you have and you would like a shout out, you need to let me know in the comments or through Twitter or Instagram that you have subscribed and I will get back to you and give you a subscription in the next uh, subscription and give you a shout out in the next video. So today, as you can guess, we're going to go through the annotations for Spectre, which is one of the film posters that you're going to need to know for component one section a and also links in to the bond franchise as a whole for component one section b so to begin with then um this poster is not as sexist as other posters predominantly because we've only got bond on the cover and we don't have any other females on here but he's still portrayed very stereotypically he's got very hyper masculine body language and his body language is also closed which stops us creating too much of a connection with him now bond and uh, the actor who plays Bond, Daniel Craig, his name as well as the director are in the top left corner. Now this actually subverts conventions because normally if you've got a well-known star or celebrity playing a role, you want to um, emphasise that and you want to make a big deal of it so that that audience then is drawn to the production. But here it's very small, so that suggests that Daniel Craig is part of the franchise and is very recognisable as this role, so they don't need to make as much an emphasis of it. He uses direct mode of address, which connect, creates a connection with the audience, but it also indicates that he's very calm, collected. We don't have a lot of emotion coming from him here. So again, it stops us from creating too much of a connection with him and adds to this overall sort of enigmatic feel. Now, we have a gun here, which is obviously a convention of the action genre, but it also links to Bond and also to the logo that we're going to go, come to later on. We've got a white tuxedo as part of the dress codes. Now this is an intertextual reference because it links back to films such as Saturday Night Fever. It's also very iconic because previous Bonds have also worn white tuxes before and overall sort of suggests this wealth and status that comes with being James Bond. Now the colour itself sort of indicates or suggests a level of purity which can suggest that Bond is the hero as we would expect. The skeleton on the other hand we would imagine is more like the villain and we'll come more onto that later on. The mask that we've got in the background could be a reference to the Day of the Dead which is a Mexican festival and actually this is the opening of the film and you'll see a little bit more of that when we analyse the trailer. However, we do have a pop of colour through this carnation that's on Bond's tuxedo. Now this signifies sort of romance which we would expect as part of the subplot for Bond, passion and danger as well. And there we have that iconic 007 logo. It's in the shape of a gun, but it's also part of the house style of the poster because we've got this gold typography, which again links to wealth, but also to power, particularly because it's all capitalised. The title Spectre could reference that ghostly image that we've got in the background and also gives us a little bit more information about the narrative and obviously links into this idea that it's very minimal, very enigmatic. We don't really know what's going on. Now Bond is the central image here, he's viewed in a long shot to show that he's the protagonist and he's right in the centre of those rule of thirds, so we are drawn to him more so than any other part of the poster. He's also viewed through high key lighting, which emphasises his masculine looks. This acts as a sort of archetype for men to follow, so it gives them a sort of reference by which they should be sort of judging themselves. Now the credit block at the bottom is a convention of film posters. It details key people who worked on the film and it's normally placed where we see it here in the bottom. So this is something that you can compare not just through the Bond franchise but through other posters as well. So you can see where that credit block is and you can see how it compares from poster to poster. Now going back to this figure in the background, he's also very masculine despite the fact that we don't know his gender. We can tell that through the sort of um, shot type that's being used, the fact that we've got this top hat as well which again tends to be associated with the male gender um, and this overall then provides a sort of underrepresentation of females. We don't have any women that we know of on this poster. And the dress codes clearly label him as the villain, as we said, or the antagonist of the film. And it, it's left to us to wonder who he is. Now, if you have seen the film, then you know who he is. If not, and you don't want it to be spoiled, pause now. 
Okay, so just to sort of reveal it for you guys, um, the guy who is in the background wearing the skeleton mask is actually Bond himself. So this adds another layer to the interpretation of the poster because it suggests that Bond is sort of going to be fighting himself or he's going to have to combat part of his own history or past, which is part of the narrative of this film as a whole. So breaking it down then into those key concepts, so the entire poster is very minimal, it gives very little information, so this adds to the sort of enigmatic feel of the production and the narrative as a whole. We've got some conventions of posters that we would expect to find, such as the house style, the credit block, and we've also got franchise conventions, such as the 007 logo, which you'll see in other productions for Bond. The poster doesn't have a BBFC rating and it also doesn't have a release date so that suggests that this poster was put together, created and made before the actual film was released. We've also got the director and Daniel Craig's names very small in the top left of the poster which suggests that they're not as important and perhaps the fact that Craig is easily recognisable as part of the brand and part of the franchise. Now our primary audience are going to be 18 to 34 males. Even though this film had a rating of a 12A, actually it was intended to have a 15 rating and because Sony sort of wanted to um, make this more appealable they actually cut a lot of the fight scenes out of it so that it would be marketable for a 12 audience. But given the longevity of the Bond franchise it's unlikely that 12 year olds are going to be particularly interested in viewing or seeing this and so I would imagine that they are not going to be the main audience going to this. They'd be a little bit older. So perhaps 18 to 34 males. Because of their age range they're going to be B to C2 on that ABC1 scale and they're likely to be aspirers because Bond's wealth and status gives people something to aspire towards. The secondary demographic are also going to be males and some females as well but they're going to be older because these are going to be the original audience for the original Bond films who are already going to be succeeders and who will have grown up with this franchise as a sort of tradition. Now in terms of representation the poster as a whole is very enigmatic, we get very little information about the narrative. Bond, as one of the main characters on the poster, is stereotypical. He's got very closed, hyper-masculine posture. He's very wealthy, shown through the dress codes. But we don't get a lot of emotion from him, even though we have this direct mode of address. And the background image of the skeleton figure has got connotations of evil and death. But he's also larger than Bond, which suggests that he's going to be very significant. Hopefully that's helped you guys today. Um, if you didn't see the video last week, I do have an Instagram account now. Um, so I'll pop a link to that in the description box below. And I'll be putting information up there, particularly as term starts, um, just on ways that you guys can revise. I'll be screenshotting a few things that I use within my classroom so that you guys can sort of follow that if you're not one of the students that I teach. You can also get in touch with me through Twitter, as usual, at media underscore revision. Please pop a comment on my feed or down below in the comments section if you have any questions, comments, concerns. If you have any suggestions for videos, please be aware that I do have a list of things that I'm aiming to get through, um, but I can always add anything that you want covering to the end of that list so that we get around to it eventually. Also, let me know if you need a, a shout out in the next video. Please subscribe and I'll see you guys next week for the next video.